Welcome. Welcome. It's Friday night. We're coming at you. It's the Stay of Homekins podcast. That's right. This is Stay of Homekins, and we are the Homekins. My name, well, it's Paul F. Tompkins. <laughs> My name, well, it's Janie Haddad Tompkins. She is an actress. He is a comedian. We are a married couple living in Los Angeles, and this is our after dinner podcast. We drop this puppy once a month. Mm-hmm. On the second Friday of every month. First Friday, of course, we go to Mass. <laughs> and then we go to McDonald's as a treat and have a filet of fish This is our October episode. That's right. And uh, <laughs> we're coming at you with some Halloween vibes. <laughs> yes, it's very spooky. Very spooky, very scary here. Very scary. Very cutesy. Very scary. <laughs> Do um, you think Yes, dear. We will have trick or treaters this year. God, I fucking hope so. It no. is my dream. We love it and unfortunately in recent years the numbers have been declining. Yeah, we'll see what happens. Cuz there's a thing in our neighborhood where they which I think is relatively recent where they block off a block and Fuck those people. <laughs> to me, it's like, but then kids, you're you're missing out on going more to candy h- houses. And yes, yeah, yeah. You can do one block. Whatever. Well, a neighborhood is not made up of one block. <laughs> I agree, Paul. Anyway, <laughs> this is our um, this is our Stay of Homekins podcast. Thank you for tuning in. We are doing a month, if you haven't heard, of spooky movie watch alongs, which right. can be found on our Weekend Water Substack. That's correct. In fact, I've got my IRL Weekend Water right now, mm. and I'm drinking some. I what about you, doing, Paul? I'm doing the same. Yes. Yeah, so you go to weekendwater.substack.com and you can subscribe. And yeah, how are you doing? I'm doing okay. I'm. Um, Excited about, I, I like Halloween and I like October, so I'm excited October that we're in this is my, month. I'm one of my favorite months. Well, it's also the month you were born, so that's really <laughs> oh special. Oh my God, I wasn't fishing, but I like what I caught. <laughs> I mean, I am turning, it is a big birthday this year. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know like what it's like to be 30, but <laughs> it's going to be a big one. It's going to be exciting. Um, yeah, I like October. Um, a lot going on in the world. I just want to say, I know we might have some listeners who have been impacted by the recent oh wet, uh, severe and extreme weather. Yes. We just want you to know that we are thinking of, of you. And if people are paying attention to what's going on in the news, there are many ways that you can reach out and help and donate yeah. and resources online. Some people still don't have power. So yeah. I don't even know how they... Hopefully, can find resources with the boots on the ground. Mm-hmm. Um, I just wanted to get that uh, spoken because it's been it's been very worrisome. It's harrowing to watch. Yeah, and you know, I I can't imagine what people are going through um, who are living through it. And I mean, all I can say is hang in there. And you know, I I'm so sorry that this is happening. And honestly, I feel like we're in a place with. Uh, the climate crisis. Well, I mean, I feel like I've read news. Sorry, I've read news stories mm-hmm. where we were where we are in a place with the climate crisis, where it's just n- no area will be untouched. No, by extremity. No, and that's I don't know how do you live. How do we live like like that? I I'm, I truly don't know, and I and I. It's such a it's such an insane thing. It's so crazy. It's so crazy. People are people are now seeing the uh, the northern lights. <laughs> yeah, there. My mom in South Carolina texted me last night. And she's like, "The northern lights are in." She's in Charleston, South Carolina, are here, and I was like, "Okay, that's crazy." She's like. The world has gone upside down or yeah. whatever. And I'm like, it has. Our friend has. Co-op sent us a picture. From Minnesota. Yeah. It was like, what's... <laughs> I, don't know. I will say, I, that is the one thing about climate 
change that I would love is if we could see the Northern Lights because mm. I've never seen the Northern Lights and I would like to see them. But I guess that's a weird thing. I to- mean, if that's the last thing we see before we go underwater forever, <laughs> that's not so bad. <laughs> <laughs> I don't understand this. And, you know, I mean, I don't understand this time we're living through. I It's so... No, I don't either. I'm annoyed that we are the people that have to live through it. <laughs> I've kind of... I think I've entered a new stage with it, mm-hmm. a new stage of, like, madness. Anger or insanity? Insanity. Yeah. No, anger... I'm too tired for anger. Mm-hmm. Are you? I... You live with a little bit of anger. That's true. I idle on angry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but I know what you mean about feeling tired. It is so, there's so much that's going on that it is overwhelming and it does wear you down. You know, all yeah. the things that we're, that we're having to think about. Yeah. And then this stupid election that's coming up. <laughs> I feel, I don't know, like, um, I think the election is, uh, well, I don't like to make predictions because there there is no prediction. But I have some optimism about some mm-hmm. things changing mm-hmm. because I think people are starting to wake the fuck up. I hope so. I hope so. But that's just, you know, I don't know. Yeah. Do you have optimism? Sometimes. Sometimes. What do you have right now? Do you have, like, optimism? I or kind pepto- of just don't. I just don't know. I just don't know. I think know. everyone should vote. Go vote, 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 vote. Yeah, and you know what? I'm going to say vote for Kamala Harris. Don't vote for Donald Trump. <laughs> I want to say that specifically. <laughs> I know we're supposed to... <laughs> we're supposed to just say go vote. supposed to be like, you know, whatever. It's just vote. It's important to vote. Make your voice heard. But it's like, don't fucking vote for Donald Trump. Donald Trump... I'm going to say it. Can I say it? Can I say whatever I want to say? I don't know. Yeah, of course you can. He is a traitor. Whoa. <laughs> he is a traitor to the country. And he deserves whatever the law throws Do you at know him. The thing, that, the thing that sucks the most about him being a traitor. Uh-huh. <laughs> is that we like this show, The Traitors. Exactly. <laughs> He's ruining traders for everyone. It's that he doesn't even fucking care. You know what he means? Do like trader? Has, oh, like so, like some traders he have do it out of have his, convictions. Yeah, he doesn't have any ideology. He doesn't give a shit. Right. Like it's one thing if you have like if you're like I've been um, radicalized, mm-hmm. and I and I've taken the whatever pill, the yeah. whatever you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. and. Um, and, and my radicalization has convinced me, convinced me that this is this moral and righteous path. Yeah. Like on the one hand, it's like, okay, you've gone cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs, Mm -hmm. but you know. If only it were for Cocoa Puffs. (laughs) But I get it. What if somebody became a traitor to the United States because (laughs) they went cuckoo for Cocoa Puffs? I mean, at this point, I wouldn't be surprised. I'd say now I I've seen everything. <laughs> Let's before we okay before we get into the second half, which is where we usually kind of get into more serious things. Is there anything well, fun that we can talk about? You have to understand. This is October of twenty twenty four. I know. I understand. I'm not saying not talk about it at all. This is October I'm saying twenty twenty four. I already mentioned our spooky watch alongs. And now he go right into Trump as a traitor. Well, he's a traitor. He's a traitor. I call him like I see him. (laughs) Famous Katie quote. Who's Katie? Who's Katie? Is she from like like a reality show? Like a reality show? Katie. Just Katie. Katie. Yeah. Katie. Give me a hint. I cannot believe this is happening right now. Is it someone we know in real life? No, of course not. Katie. You asked if it was somebody from a reality show, and I said yes. No, you didn't. Oh, that's true. <laughs> that's true. <laughs> I, 
I reacted with with <laughs> outrage. Oh my god! You're like gaslighting me in front of the public. <laughs> you mean Katie from Vanderpump Rules? Yes, of course. <laughs> The only Katie we ever talk about. We hadn't talked about Vanderpump in such... It's been a while. We got fooled by Peacock the other day. Oh, God. Made us think there was a new episode of Vanderpump, and it was just one of those dumb secrets revealed or whatever bullshit. I am so pissed at the state of television and streaming and this, that, news. and the other, because it's, it's messing news. with everything. Like, we do our watch-alongs, we do our reaction pods, mm. and, mm. you know, I have to feed my television addiction, which I will never wean myself from. That's right. And this shit is all, all over the place. It's just all over the place. It's just all over the place. Listen, I am in a... I'm it's in all a, over the shop, mate. <laughs> You're all over the shop. I'm in a I'm in a situation. It's mental. It's mental. It's proper mental. You are leaving town. Yes, the final leg of the Comedy Bang Bang tour. Wednesday, we will be in Morale. Morale. Then we go to Morale. To, wow. <laughs> Oh, <laughs> you're sounding more like a raven. That's a very Halloween. It is. It's like a oh, very... it's, uh, the most Halloween bird there is. <laughs> if, if you if there's a more Halloween bird than the raven, mm, I'd an like owl. to know. <sighs> an That's owl. Pretty good. That's pretty good. Don't forget. I got to put Raven over Owl, I have to say. Because of Edgar Allan Poe. Yeah, I think Edgar Allan Poe really he did, pushed he Ravens branded, over the top. He like did the quote the Raven. He branded Nevermore. Ravens with scariness, yes. Yeah. Quoth the Raven. He gave Nevermore. the Raven a quote. <laughs> he gave the Raven a catchphrase. Yeah. Nevermore. Nevermore. <laughs> That's what the Raven sounded like. Nevermore. Nevermore. <laughs> I'm out of my mind with uh, fatigue, and so this is going to be a real. This is going to be it's a real be ride. A if you're listen, Dalalapalooza. Like, listen, guys. If this is your first rodeo with us, <laughs> yeehaw! <laughs> first, first of all, yeehaw! First of all, I guess welcome to this. I don't know. Second of all, why is it 700 degrees in here? It's extremely warm. I need you maybe to blow out these guys. Why can't we turn down the AC? Oh, the AC. Okay, it's not. Let me go mess with it. Can you vamp? Sure, I can vamp. Because <laughs> I got to go the long way around this cord. <laughs> Listen, this is a message Take to all right Los Angeles children within the sound of my voice. We have candy for you. We're going to have good candy for you. Name brand candy. If you will just come to our home, we'll give it to you. <laughs> come dressed as something scary or cute. Come dressed as something we don't understand. Speaking it doesn't of matter. Candy. Thanks for vamping. Hey Mr. man, you got it. Um, we did a little episode. We did post about it on our subsec, but in case you're not aware, if you're not aware, friend of the pod. Ask Rana with Rana and Brian. That's right. Rana Glickman, Brian Safi. Had us on their illustrious Ask Rana podcast for we their the annual candy. Annual Halloween candy tasting. And let me tell you something. We tried a bunch of different candies. On this podcast. You can find it anywhere you get podcasts. candies. Anywhere Halloween you get podcasts. Versions. Anywhere you get podcasts. We're on the, that episode. And afterwards, having taken one bite... Of several disgusting different candy, candy bars, <laughs> I felt worse than I'd felt in I a felt really long so, time. I felt like <laughs> I felt like a garbage can. I felt absolutely disgusting. I felt like a garbage pail kid. Yeah, but here's what happens though: when we have Halloween candy here, mm -hmm. and the kids are coming, mm -hmm. we nibble on the candy too. Sure. Yeah. 
How come I don't feel the same way? Because it's normal candy. We were tasting like fucked up, weird, off center cat candy. Off center cat candy. <laughs> it might as well be for cats, this candy. Off center cat candy. Yeah. Yeah. Off center cat candy. Off center cat candy <laughs> was what we were eating, and it was like so gross. There, there was, was a lot of white chocolate. A lot of white chocolate. Like, I don't know what that was about. They're trying to do ghost stuff, you know what? bone stuff. You know what? I bet fucking Elon Musk mm-hmm. likes white chocolate. Oh my God, I bet you're right. I bet he. I, I bet, bet he, he fucking likes white and chocolate. He tells people that it's a superior chocolate. Dude. And it's also because he's racist. <laughs> Oh, my God. Oh, my God. I cannot believe that just hit me like that. It's because gotta it's be got to be fucking There's true. There's no way it's not it's true. It's got to be fucking true. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. God. <laughs> what is this world? What is this world? All right. What do you think are some of the costumes we're going to see? What are kids going to dress up as? Chapel Roan. Oh, I would love that. <laughs> <laughs> I would love that. Pink Pony Club. <laughs> That would be funny to see some little chapel roads. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, Shohei. Oh, yeah. I hope we see some Shohei's. Shohei Atani. Probably Ken Bone. <laughs> <laughs> you just got boned. <laughs> Wait. <laughs> some child showed up at my house I dressed would, as this Ken. This year? As Ken 2024. Bone. He loves Ken Bone. He loves Ken Bone. I would, I would dump the entire bucket in that kid's bag. I I'd would. Say, yeah, you, I also, would turn off the and lights. And I would study the child for science. Yeah. I would say, you're a genius. <laughs> Here's all the candy. We're turning the lights out. Come by any time. <laughs> Come by any time you want, and we'll give you something from our home. <laughs> You don't even have to dress up as Ken Bone again. I would love to see a little Tim Walls. <laughs> that would be funny. Yeah. That would be funny. Uh, I think we'll see a Kamala. That would be cute. Okay. I'm really going to stick it to you. Uh-oh. What if there was a little Donald Trump? What would, would you do? would me out. Would you give him the candy? No. Should we get white chocolate? Just in case yes. there's little Donald Trump. That's exactly what we should do. We should have one bar of white chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> what was the to worst? Punish. It was the, the cookies and cream fangs All of it was gross. Making Hershey's. me actually nauseous just like <laughs> re- recounting this. Hershey's pod- made this thing. Wait, what do you think was the worst? The Hershey's cookies and cream fangs. Doesn't None oh, of it made any yeah. sense. Those are gross. It was shitty that it was just an, like a sort of imprint of a set of fangs on a rectangle of white cookies and cream. <laughs> God. Cho- cookies and... I don't... Man, cookies and cream can't Go do it. Go to hell. Can't do it. Go to hell, cookies and Go cream. Go to hell, cookies and cream. Yeah. GTH, CNC. <laughs> Not the CNC Music Factory. Wait, what is it? G... What is it? Go to hell... Wait, what is it? GTH G- CNC. GTH CNC. I know G- what you're going to do. GTH CNC. You have to do it so G- slow. T- G- <laughs> T- <laughs> That's a little chapel round reference. GTH CNC. Yeah, you did it. Okay. You did it. Guys, okay, what else are we going to say? Now, I don't wait. like cookies and cream as a flavor. The, we're going to see, we might see, I haven't seen, there's been some movies for kids I haven't seen. There's been some movies for kids you haven't seen. <laughs> yes. <laughs> like, uh, well, like I heard Wild Robot, very good. Oh, I'd like to see that. But I wouldn't mind seeing a, a robot, a little robot. I'd love to see a robot. Any kind of robot. A, a Roomba? If a kid came here dressed as a Roomba, absolutely. What if there were a Roomba with a cat on top of it? That would be that would be fantastic. That's a good. If they were, good. it's like one of those costumes where it's like two parts. Yes, where they have like a the, Roomba around the around waist, the waist and, and then they're a cat from the on waist the top. Up. Yes. Yeah. And then the bottom is just like dangly shreds. Yeah. Like yes. underneath the Roomba. Yes. And then I would say, okay, you have to pick up the candy like a Roomba, and I'd mm. make them like. Careen around the door frame mm. and then give it to him. Mm. <laughs> okay. 
But I would I would be open to any sort of robot costume Roomba R two D two. Sure. Um, any of it. How nine thousand? How how? I would like a how. We don't see how. We just see how's just a voice. There's a, there's like a red um, light. Okay. Yeah. Okay. It's tricky, but I think a clever enough kid could pull it off. Mm. Okay. Mm, okay. <laughs> so we watched Salem's Lot. Like, yes. We watched have the you, new Salem's Lot on Max. Have you ever read any Stephen King? Did we talk about this? Yeah, I've read Stephen King. What have you read? Well, I read um, It in high school. Okay. Never read it. Then I read um, um, The Shining. Never read it. And then I read, um, I think I read Pet Cemetery. Yes, Pet Cemetery. I read. Never read it. I read, I think I read, yeah, some short stories like The Mist or some weird shit about bugs and a fog or Yeah, there's big bugs in the mist. Yeah, I read about that one. I have only ever read, I read the short story collection that was Stand By Me. Mm hmm. I think it's called Four Seasons. Mm hmm. Stand By Me, Apt Pupil. Mm hmm. Mm, there's two other. Thinner, I think they, thinner. Was that part of it? Thinner, thinner. was not part oh, of okay. it. I've seen the movie Thinner. <laughs> is that movie? What is that movie? Thinner. Like, <laughs> that sounds like a funny watch along. Actually, I've not, I've never seen it. It's dumb. <laughs> <laughs> well, that makes it funny to me. No. True. Well, um, I will. I'm reading. Like a horror book right now. Mm. Oh, Shawshank Redemption was the other. There's one. I think there's one story in that short story collection that was not made into a movie. Okay. Um. So we watched the Sal- Salem's Lot. We watched that. Another like, and people have commented like they talked about the book because yeah. I guess there's a lot of details in the books. Yeah. So if you watched our Salem's Lot Watch Along, thank you. And thank you for commenting at weekendwater.substack.com where the conversation is always ongoing. Always ongoing. And um, so they were not very faithful with some of the characters in this new version, apparently. Well, here's the thing. It was, this is the case with Stephen King stuff, is that they don't have enough time to get everything in there. But you know what? That's also the case with book adaptations of movies. But that's why I feel like miniseries is... Well, and mini-series, I guess they did a miniseries of yes, Salem's Lot, but I'm saying miniseries of beloved books I find are superior just in general. I think that it, it's... it's Like you're going to bring a book to life. Well, here's the thing. It, it, you can bring a book to life in a movie, but you have to make sacrifices of stuff in the book. And when you see the credit, executive producer Stephen King, there's not going to be no sacrifices. Every character is going to be in there, <laughs> even if they have to cut out some of the stuff. So he doesn't kill his darlings, as they say. No, I the think that horror I, king does not kill. I think if he's there, darlings. they want to please him. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And so, I mean, there were characters that were, for me, never having read the book. And never having read, seen any other iteration of Salem's Lot, because when I'm, the miniseries came out when I was a kid, it was too terrifying. I couldn't watch that. <laughs> and then I guess they did it again with Rob Lowe. Okay. But I never saw that. I could. I mean, some people were like, "I don't have Max. I don't, you know." Did this. And it's like, well, we're doing these five watch-alongs in October, and we have to do a lot of like. Catering to different types of people, you know. Some people get the movie one way. Some people get the movie another way. I yeah, just wanted some to movies are available in multiple places. I mean, I didn't know we were going to get into the how you know the sort of nuts and bolts. Well, but I was just sort of like reacting to the reaction to yeah, the specific. Yeah, yeah. No, I get you. W- watch along, right? Yeah. Um, but um, but what about The Exorcist, which was our first one and has already come out, and uh, you know. How the did you feel about was, The Exorcist? It's still pretty good, I have to say. 
this is really good. It's still pretty good. It's good. But I still, I had so many questions, like... Yes. Why was that little St. Christopher medal important? Why was, if Pazuzu's beef was with that priest... Father Marin. Father Marin. Like, he went through a lot of weird trouble to get him back in the game. Why didn't he possess somebody... In his circle. Where he was already. That's what I'm saying. Guy was right there. Yeah. Or Where how did he about fucking this? go? He went to like what Mesopotamia or something? What if mm-hmm. Pazuzu possessed Father Marin? Because that's the ultimate revenge. That's the ultimate. Well, then you're getting into the Pope's exorcist territory with Russell Crowe, where um. a demon does possess... The Pope's exorcist at some point. But he, he figures it out, unlike the priest in The Exorcist. Right. Who was like, what can I do? <laughs> jump into me, I jump out the window. <laughs> <laughs> but He's look, like, you results know. speak for themselves. Okay, so tell me more things about... Well, I wanted to talk more about Stephen King, and I can't remember what happened. Before I we... changed the subject. Oh my God, so sue me. <laughs> I'm such a terrible person. I know I'm out of my mind tonight. Yeah, I'm out really, of my mind. You really are. I'm really tired, mm-hmm. slightly buzzed, might be on the Still other pre-gaming. side <laughs> of the buzz where I'm like maybe even having, uh, having a hangover right now. Now, I don't know if we've talked about this on mic, but Janie, of course, has an accelerated <laughs> drunk cycle what? where she gets str- when she drinks. I feel hungover literally she gets drunk from like a glass of wine. Right away. <laughs> she's drunk for a little bit, then the hangover, and then it's over. But it's all collapsed into a very short amount of time. I. <laughs> what is that? I don't know. It's your metabolism, maybe? I don't know. Are you fucking... I wish that my metabol... If that... If my metabolism worked that way with anything else, I would be thrilled. Wouldn't that be nice? I would be thrilled. I'd love it. For me. For, for, for me. For me. If I had it. Yeah. No, I understand. I'm saying I would also like to have that. I would like to have that. <laughs> I've been back at the gym. It's been... Oh, I'm so... That's good for your mental health, too. You and- know what? It is... It but, is. Is there a but? When I miss a day, I feel really bad about myself. Well, that's... That's the challenge, is okay. to not do that. You're, you can't go to that place. <laughs> mm-hmm. That is... You an- mean the place where I live? <laughs> <laughs> the place where I've lived for 50 plus years? <laughs> yes, yes, yes. That's what I'm saying. I think you look very cute right now. <laughs> Thank you. Are you t- trying to change the subject? No, I'm not. I'm just looking at you, and you're very cute because th- we have the candles lit. Oh, so the low lighting helps. <laughs> you pulled your hair back. <laughs> I know. I'm being a little. I'm being a little cheeky, guys. You're ruining it. Ruining it. Don't ruin it. Ruining it. Thank you. I love you. All right. So this is funny because we're talking about, we're talking about self-talk. We're talking about mindset. Self-talk mindset. We're talking about very demure, very mindful, very cutesy. That's right. So basically I had this crazy like practical joke played on myself a little bit. This this week. This is intriguing. Okay. 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 I'm intrigued. This is not a thought I have shared with you. Mm -hmm. This is a little internal journey that I went on. An internal journey? An (laughs) internee? Do you like that? Does that work? I kind of love it. I went on an internee. I actually kind of (laughs) fucking love it in a way that's disgusting. Ew. In like an influencer, like, like, mm. you know, like, welcome to my interny channel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Turn the lights down. 
play some Why don't white I have to noise. turn the lights out for your attorney? <laughs> <laughs> so what happened? This is my book. What happened? Please join me for my interny. <laughs> if you're reading this book, turn the lights down. <laughs> if you're reading that, how are you going to read what it happened? with the lights down? What happened? How on are you going to in- read it with the lights what down? What happened on your interny? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see if I can take you through this. Mm-hmm. Let me see if I can take you through this. Yeah. So I signed up to be. I'm trying to think where I go with this, how I frame this. I signed up to be a mentor. Yes. For, um, I went to... Overprivileged youths. <laughs> kind of. <laughs> <laughs> sort of. Um, the, I went to um, an art school at SMU, Meadows School of the Arts, mm-hmm. um, for my master's. <laughs> um, so I'm an, ex- an expert in acting and not working as an actor. So I (laughs) signed up as a mentor for young artists Mm -hmm. like that are in the arts program there. Mm -hmm. And so my name was on the list and I was approached to be interviewed Mm -hmm. on a podcast that the communications, this communications class produces Mm -hmm. and they interview a, like a Meadows grad Right. For for the po- podcast or whatever. And um, it was kind of delightful. I mean, because it was a senior uh, in college, you know, and she was interviewing me and she was just adorable. Mm-hmm. And her name is Renee Garza. And I, I don't know when the episode comes out. I'll have to check it out. I think it comes out weekly. So um, I think it's called Hello Hilltop or Hi from the Hilltop or something, you know. And um, she wanted to know if I had any advice for you know people like embarking on a on a journey in the entertainment industry um and one of the things that i was talking about was how important mindset is when you are building a career or forging a career in the arts or any creative career especially in acting and the entertainment industry That basically mindset is the one thing that I wish that I had known about when I was starting out. And um, that if you can can kind of like conquer and cultivate uh, a mindset, I don't know, I'm not speaking well, but like basically... Because all you knew about was the grind set. (laughs) I do. Well, I did know about the grind set, Mm -hmm. actually. But the grind set will fuck your mindset. Because, like, essentially, like, your mindset has to be, it's a marathon, it's not a sprint. It has to be, you know, it takes a, it only takes one yes out of a thousand no's. Like, it has to be all of these things where you yeah. cult- cultivate these things. And uh, then, so then I had this experience this summer where a friend of mine <laughs> who approached me to be in her film short. Mm-hmm. And her, she was producing it, and this director, he, he like she had suggested me, and he really wanted me to be in this film short. And I read the film short, and I was like, I don't think you want me in this. Like I basically like was saying all of these reasons why they should not ask me mm-hmm. to do the part. Mm-hmm. I, Cause I was like, I think, I don't know, this reads so much younger and they're like, no, no, we want like women of a certain age in these roles. Like it's important. It adds this layer to, to the messaging, like, you know, cause it's this, whatever. I don't want to like get into the story, but when the, when the short comes out, you'll be hearing about it. And, um, I ended up ha- uh, doing it, agreeing to do it. And I ended up having this like incredible experience Mm -hmm. where everyone was so everyone just vibed together and we're we're all on the same creative page it was like this very joyful um creative and nourishing kind of film shoot Mm -hmm. and I walked away from the experience and I was like hey you know I am I think I really needed that in my mind like I was like because my self-esteem had been sort of 
plummeting. I mean, mm-hmm. I hadn't worked in a long time. There were all the strikes last year. I feel like I don't know where I fit in in as an actor anymore because I'm now reading for different parts of a certain age, but I don't know if I come across as the right, you know, vibe or whatever for Mm -hmm. these, even though I know I can, you know, and I was just like really struggling with my self-esteem and I thought, wow, that was such an amazing experience. So I go to this uh, uh, Meadows event last night, this mixer with all these like younger Meadows students. I know it's uh, like, it's all about the Meadows School of Arts and I'm talking all about it, but it's because mm-hmm. I signed up for this fucking list, you guys, and I'm <laughs> I'm trying to get involved with young people in the arts. Mm-hmm. And there are all these like young people there and I met this really sweet and cute filmmaker and we were joking around um, and, you know, he turned out he had been a strike captain and... Uh, a WGA strike captain at, at the Universal lot, mm-hmm. and you know, and he was working on this new comedy film. And I was like, "Well, I guess I'll be seeing you if you ever call me in. I know I can play all those mom parts or whatever." And I got home and I was like, "Why did I say that? Mm-hmm. Why did I say I can play those mom parts? Like, that's not a good mindset. Mm-hmm. Like, the mindset of the actor is that you can play like any part." Mm-hmm. And I don't mean like any part, like I can play a 25-year-old boy, although I yeah, could yeah. on stage, like mm-hmm. I could easily play a 25-year-old boy theatrically, but maybe not on television mm-hmm. because t- television, they would just cast a 25-year-old, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. But I'm, what I'm talking about is sort of like limiting myself to these patriarchal stories of like, well, if there's a woman that is my age in a thing, they're going to either be like the mom or the whatever, the forgotten this or that. And I had just worked on this film where I was like literally like the lead of this short film, mm-hmm. even though I like tried to talk them out of mm-hmm. having me in it. Yeah. And here I am telling young people that they need to cultivate this sort of like fierce kind of warrior mindset mm-hmm. about like taking on all of these stereotypes and sort of like, you know, how America... Aging in America is like so hard because it causes you to be sort of like buy into like these narratives, yeah. you know, that are not, they're not monolithic, mm-hmm. you know. Um, and my point is on my, in, what is it? In journey, in, in journey, in journey, in journey, on my interney. I was grappling with my own sort of default internal monologue. So, Mm -hmm. like, if you're saying to yourself, oh, I missed one day out of five days of taking care of my mental health, you know, I'm a piece of shit. Mm -hmm. Because I said I was going to do five days Mm -hmm. and I only did four or whatever. I'm such a piece of shit. Like, you know... I don't know. Like, would you tell someone else to say that to themselves? Exactly. Of course not. And, you know, that's that a thing. That was my attorney. I'm sorry. It was a very long attorney. It's a good. I, it's not the attorney. It's the. <laughs> I don't it's even the know. It's the friends I, you make along the way. I got. No. I got, <laughs> so it had to be a play on destination, but I got, I got ahead of myself. <laughs> I didn't have a ready. <laughs> it's the ingestination. <laughs> <laughs> Honey, that's it. It's not the attorney. It's, it's the ingestination. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, my point is, and I got, I know I just like revealed a lot about myself on this fucking podcast just now because, yeah, I got buzzed and then, hmm? and then it went away and now I'm hungover and I'm having some hair <laughs> of the dog. <laughs> sure, that maybe all happened in the span of two hours. I can't explain it. It's scientifically unexplainable. When you... <laughs> When you pass on, I hope that doesn't happen for another thousand years, but they will have to examine your brain. I'm saying you need to be, you need to be mindful. Yeah. About. I do. Like. Well, that's, and I'm trying to do that. You know what I mean? So like yesterday I did not exercise. Did all your children seem so far away? (laughs) And I felt bad about it. Yeah. But I didn't. I didn't take it so hard. You so know what you're I mean? sort of like softening on yourself. It's yeah. not like you've reversed. I'm making the you effort like to do that. You haven't like reversed it. You're just no, like. No, no, no. I'm being, I'm being aware of it and I'm pushing back against that voice. 
Because it's not helping me. You know what I mean? It just makes me feel bad. No, it burns you the fuck out. So when I have those, when I have that voice in my head that's telling me that, oh, you failed because you didn't do this thing you said you were going to do. It's your little shut up, Judge. It's your yeah, little and like. I, I, I've learned to push back on it. I'm learning to push back on it and say, I don't fucking need that right now. Shut up. You know? Yeah. And it's it's getting better, you know? Yeah. I mean, I want that to get. I want that for you. I know you do. I did, I long I long for that for you, but also for everyone. Like everyone's in a mental health crisis right now. Oh, that's true. And you know, I was somewhere today. I was out. I had to, to you know I had to do some writing and I had to leave the house. And I was like, you know, sitting in a fucking coffee shop. Okay, you know. <laughs> All like, right. Some cliches are true. <laughs> we go to coffee shops with our computers. So what? I, for one, I love a third space. You met, you said third space earlier in a text to someone else, and I'm not sure what that means. Now you're making me question that it's a real thing. It sounds so solid to me. <laughs> like, oh, yeah, third space, absolutely. No, I think a third space is, so there's your home, which is, a first. Got to be space number one. Got to be. <laughs> if it's not, that's fucked up. Home has to be number one space with a bullet. Then you got your work. That's number two space. Your yeah. second space. That's the second space. Third space. Third space are these spaces where you go and you interact with society you liminally exist sometimes you want to go where everybody knows your name you see what i'm saying and that's why <laughs> cheers should have been called third, the space. third space cheers was a third space cheers was a third cheers space. was the ultimate except for norman right <laughs> <laughs> do you know what's funny is that for some of the characters it was second it was second space because it was their work sam carla diane Diane. Woody. Rebecca. Woody. Coach. Coach. <laughs> Robin it, Colcord upstairs. <laughs> the mean bald man who was there for a little bit. <laughs> Do we have any ads? No. Let's just keep going then. <laughs> Wait, we're not going to uh, pause and pretend? No, why? I don't know. Let's just keep talking. <laughs> Let's just keep on going. Although I do have to talk about kinship goods here in a minute. Okay. We want to do it right now? I don't know. Let's pretend this is the ad space. Wait. First space, second space, third space, ad space. <laughs> I was just reminded today mm. by our merchandise partners mm. at Kinship Goods. Mm -hmm. The wonderful Kinship Goods. That there are still... Some items under the Homekins umbrella <laughs> over at kinshipgoods.com mm -hmm. that are on sale and they're cleaning out. Nice. And guess what? Including a sweatshirt. So if you've been wanting a sweatshirt, you want a new fall sweatshirt, get it on sale. Which sweatshirt is this? Well, if I told you, you wouldn't go to kinshipgoods.com to find out. Do you want me to Google it, find out which one it is? <laughs> now I understand. You don't know. The platypus shirt is not on sale. I'm sorry. Platypus shirt, I'd rather be duck-billed than red-pilled, is not on sale. Because that's a hot ticket item, it's guys. It's a hot ticket item, baby. And maybe... You'd rather be red pilled than duck billed. And that's why you haven't bought one yet. Yeah. Hey, good for you. Stand up by I, your convictions. I personally would rather be duck billed I would than red pilled. One, I'm going to say you can offer me a thousand red pills yeah. and one duck bill. And I'm going to say, give me that duck bill. So that you would wear the platypus t shirt with pride, is what you're saying. With enormous pride. <laughs> With enormous pride. So please go check it out. They're cleaning out some of those items and you can snag them on discount. And you know what? 
I love a sale. Don't I'm you sorry. want to find out what the sweatshirt is? I like, first of all, I'm wearing personally my Halloween Stay of Homekin sweatshirt right now. This one was uh, the Frankenstein version. It's a Frankenstein. It, you know, there's like a Dracula version and there's a Frankenstein version right. of the Piggly Wiggly Pig. This is a pig Frankenstein. Saying yeah. And he's going yeah. Yeah. But he's sort of going yeah. Because he's a scary monster. How long ago was that story? Well, that was a long we time started ago. the podcast in 2020. I know, but when the story actually happened. Oh, well. When I started doing that voice. Well, my stepdad was still alive because he was in the car. Yes. So it was pre-2016. Wow. Y'all. Y'all. Them girls going to get some trouble Them at the Piggly Wiggly get in some trouble at the Piggly Wiggly 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 Apparently that is uh the pig the the y'all sweatshirt is the most popular. Oh, that's merch. nice. Don't understand why it's not the platypus yet, but whatever. Go ahead, I, get that platypus. I think the word needs to be gotten out there. I'd rather be duck billed oh, than red pilled. Come on, guys. Should, here's Come what we on, should tell guys. people. The yeah. platypus, he's wearing sunglasses. He is. He's wearing the same sunglasses as the pig Louis. Maybe we haven't been Clear. Doing our due diligence. Or we haven't, we haven't been clear, been clear about, about it. The platypus is wearing sunglasses. I love that platypus shirt. I do too. And it's a nice soft blue. It's really cute. Oh my God. They started making stuff for Freedom as well. Mm-mm. My Mm-mm. other podcast. Oh, don't promote the other podcast. Excuse <laughs> no me. No free rides. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome to talk about the Freedom merch. Stuff is so comfortable. It's I so did soft. get the. Wait, I did get. I kind of like sort of complained or like. Was squeaky wheel about it, and I got my own. I got my own freedom That's merch. If you had to guess, yeah, how many seconds of freedom have you listened to? Well, sometimes you have to listen to it. Yes, for I guess I don't know quality control. We have to cut out all the racist stuff I say <laughs> <laughs> and the state secrets. Uh huh. Oh right, because you because of the many times you've been to Mar-a-Lago. Oh, God, I love it there. Oh, my God, I love it <laughs> And there. you came back with some documents. But I come back a little racist and full with of documents. With documents. Yeah. He gives everybody a box. <laughs> a, box. a banker's box of documents. <laughs> banker's box. They kept them in the bathroom. Sorry. I'm sorry. I but can't. But you've only, you've only heard it, I've overheard heard... it when I've been listening to it. Correct. I don't have a subscription to Comedy Bang Bang World, which you I don't. You don't need it. Oh, I don't? Freedom is free. Really? If you want it ad free, you should sign up at Comedy Bang Bang World. Oh, I get it. But if you want to just listen to it, it's free everywhere you get your podcasts. Are you going to ask Mike and Kulop how many minutes of freedom that they've listened to? Well, here's the thing. I know that Mike listens to the show. Okay, that makes sense to me. <laughs> Mike, Mike Castle is Lauren Lapkus's husband. I know. That makes sense to me. Kulop. Probably hasn't listened. Was not a listener to Freedom, Comedy Bang Bang. Yeah, I don't listen to Comedy Bang Bang either. Then she started listening while Scott was on the road. <gasps> like she, she missed, missed him. him. Yeah. Shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Isn't that funny? Wow. <laughs> okay. This is not a judgment on you. Sure, it's not. Mm-hmm. I know that you miss me, but I never in a million <laughs> years would think. Oh, she started listening to these podcasts. Do you know what I do when you're on the road? What do you do? I watch true crime. Yeah, of course. You live it up. <laughs> I don't blame you. Like I'm, I watch all my like garbage yeah. stuff that you don't that's, like. To, that's like, what I do. The, the 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 infrequent times that you go out of town, that's what I do. Is watch my garbage. <laughs> um. Wow. So. Oh, wait. and I eat like an animal. Oh, I believe that. Yeah. Because I'm like the driver of the, like, meals, like yeah. the what we eat. I don't like to eat garbage. <laughs> what? You're the driver of the food choo-choo. I, tr- I have gotten better about it, though, I have to say. About not eating garbage? Yes. About eating, like, a proper meal. Hmm. Okay. With, like, vegetables? Yeah. <laughs> I sound like I'm, like, a nag. <laughs> <laughs> I go to the supermarket. Uh huh. 
And, you know, they have these meals that you can just heat up. Oh, sure. You know, yeah, like something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like a little, yeah. mic- like a micro meal. Yeah, not like a Swanson's. No, but this is like stuff you like put in the fr- oven. Sure, like a like yeah, yeah. a like a deli like a deli section. Yes, go to the deli section where and they, they have, have like a little like piece of lasagna. That is not a veg, but what else? I get veg too. Listen, I don't want to have this conversation on mic. This is fucking <laughs> bullshit right now. Because I look like a fucking nag. I look like a Why trad look wife, like a, nag? like a trad wife, a trad wife, fucking tool bitch. Janie wakes up. <laughs> she wakes up at six forty-five a.m. Oh God! She puts on a flowing white dress. Sure, keep going. She mills Starts some baking. flour. Okay, churn a little butter. <laughs> churn some butter. She makes muffins. Mm-hmm. There's only the two of us, but she makes forty-eight well, muffins. I read some scripture. Read some Wait, scripture. Wait, is that part of it? Is it like a religious thing to be a trad wife, or is it just a dumb thing? I think there's a lot of overlap in that Venn diagram. I think the trad wife thing mm-hmm. is a joke, a scam. That people are doing it just for the clicks, for the likes. They're not actually doing any of this shit. <laughs> yes. I mean, yes. you know what? No, I, I, I think that's the best case scenario. Or they might be doing it, but they're doing it from a place of inauthenticity mm-hmm. to like... Look, I'm going to say, I'm going to be a little stereotypical. Do it, baby. Influencers. <laughs> if I'm going to say. What are they good for? <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Say it again. <laughs> if I'm going to be like, uh, der- like derivative. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to be like influencers, like just sort of like. If I'm going to think of, like, the most, like, common denominator of, like, an influencer culture. Mm -hmm. Because I don't have any problem with influencers. I think, you know, people should make their money how they want to make their money. I I, I kind of feel that way, too, because I'm not really, like, impacted by that at all. You know what I mean? But I find some of them... It's more a thing I read about. No, but I find some of them entertaining and and stuff. Mm -hmm. I find... I don't like when it's, like, you know, they're pushing, like... Supplements or something, yeah, you know, yeah, like yeah, it's yeah. like, ugh. even though like I read ads for supplements, but I don't consider that pushing supplements No, as much as like, I'm just telling you about a sponsor of a mm-hmm. show. I'm saying like people who are like, I take these every day of my life, Yeah, you know, to, and you're like, mm-hmm. anyway, I'm saying if like the most derivative form of like influencer, like you're like, oh, they're this or that. I think you, it's safe to say that an influencer on in some cases are developing a persona mm-hmm. crafting a persona mm-hmm. that they believe they can monetize for sure some people are influencers and they're just authentically themselves and they're like this is my lifestyle and this is how I did it da, 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 da. true but then you do have even those people you got to turn it on for the camera and you have to there's a certain amount of sort of salesmanship that you have to engage in, you know? Yes. But if it's sort of coming up from a place of more authenticity, it's like more palatable or something. I don't know. Like, but if someone's just like, I do this extreme thing, Mm -hmm. I live my life in this extreme way. Yeah. 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 And I'm being honest about it. Yeah. That's just like fake. Yeah. It feels like horseshit. So, like, the trad wife thing has got to be fake. I mean, it, it's it's so it's so hard to tell because there could be people that are living that way. I'm going to say there are people that are living that way, right? Mm-hmm. But the shit you see on TikTok or Instagram where it's like, especially TikTok, where I've seen videos of these women who, and it is like the thing I was joking about where. You get up and you bake the muffins. And yeah. The and they're, they're all like, they're all fucking done up. Right. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But made, but in a natural way, you know what I mean? Like mm. I just put on this 
skirt and blouse or whatever. And then they homeschool their kids and, you know, all this shit. And the kids help, you know, with the chores and baking Mm -hmm, and all that shit. mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it's like, Mm -hmm. okay, but this isn't what it looks like for real. If you're actually doing all these things, this is not what it fucking looks like. You're not dressed like this. These kids are not smiling and happy all right, the time. Right, like it's art you know directed. I mean? It's art directed. It's art directed. And it's like, well, then who is this for? Because this isn't really your life. You're, 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 you're writing a script based yes. on That's right. true events. That's right. <laughs> and then you're shooting a little movie of it, mm-hmm. which is not what it looks like in real life. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm-hmm. And then it does get into... Are there people that are, are the people watching this, watching it because it's aspirational or are they watching because this is outrageous and the people doing it know that in some, they sense that Mm. like, oh, there's people watching this because this is fucking crazy that I'm wearing pearls and I'm baking and teaching my children in my home. Yeah. I'm doing a piss poor job of teaching my children. It reminds me of that scene in, um, I think it's in the pilot of Mrs. Maisel. The marvelous Mrs. Maisel? (laughs) Which Mrs. Maisel did did you watch? The the malignant (laughs) Mrs. Maisel? (laughs) (laughs) Where she had another Mrs. Maisel on the back of her head? (laughs) She (laughs) told her what to do? (laughs) <laughs> yeah. I watched The Marvelous Mrs. Maisel. <laughs> Which one did you watch? I watched The Minstrel Mrs. Maisel. It was not cool. Oh, no. Yeah. Canceled. <laughs> oh, my God. I heard something today. <laughs> oh, wait. I was going to say in The Mrs. Maisel where she's like, she gets up and pretends does her full hair and makeup Mm -hmm. before her husband (laughs) wakes up and then gets back in the bed so that he thinks that she like woke up (laughs) fully. (laughs) It it was, I actually enjoyed it. Sorry. (laughs) I thought it was funny. (laughs) (laughs) It's a very funny idea. It, I liked it. I hope is not based on anything true. The other thing that was funny in Mrs. Maisel, I don't know why I'm on a Mrs. Maisel tear right now, (laughs) but like, the other thing that was really funny. Go off, Queen. <laughs> the other thing that was funny in Mrs. Maisel was how like little they parented the kids. The little kids. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I actually found that very it funny. It was like the writers forgot that the kids existed. No, I thought that was like the joke. You think it was intentional? 100. Mm-hmm. Because they kind of would, like make like weird references like, oh, yeah, the kids or whatever. Like... They, I, yeah, it was like sort of like how Remember that weird ending where <laughs> I liked the. I mean, I thought it was interesting. You mean the fact that they were like aged and yeah, yeah, yeah. It just are we like spo- guys? Mrs. Maisel spoilers ahead. Too bad. <laughs> oh, Cuckoo. Cuckoo! Cuckoo! Did you like the end of Mrs. Maisel? <laughs> we'll never know. <laughs> Cuckoo keeps I her like, own counsel. I, I thought it was an interesting ending. I didn't hate the ending. It came out of it nowhere very to me. And yeah. Look, we're not here to relitigate the Marvelous <laughs> Mrs. Maisel. I thought we were. <laughs> oh, no. We Are we talked. not? We should have talked beforehand. Are we not going to litigate we or not going to relitigate the Marvelous Mrs. Maisel? Let's talk about Pachinko because we're kind of winding Pachinko. down. Wait. What was that? I don't want to talk about Pachinko yet because we were going to... Oh, I know what we were going to talk about or what I was going to talk about. What were you going to talk about? Being canceled. Because oh. <laughs> of something you saw today? Because it's something I saw today. And, like, here's the thing. is like... I know I'm going to sound a little bit crazy right oh now. Oh, boy. When people... Complain about being canceled. Mm -hmm. I've lost my patience for it. Mm -hmm. Like at first, when all of this cancel culture, this and that, I was very curious about cancel culture. And I went Mm -hmm. down like a 
kind of a deep dive mm-hmm. to understand, like, what is it? Um, does it exist? Doesn't it exist? Mm-hmm. And actually, it might exist mm-hmm. or it might not exist. That's beside the point anymore <laughs> mm-hmm. because whether it exists or doesn't exist and you are enacting a cancel culture moment <laughs> or on the receiving end of a cancel culture moment, right. I don't want to hear about it anymore. <laughs> Because my guess is you're a grown ass person. Mm-hmm. And sometimes getting canceled is not getting canceled, but merely having to grapple and face something this about is, yourself. It always gets back to this is that people want to be able to say and do whatever they want. Okay. And not suffer any consequences sure. or pushback or fun, whatever. Fun. Get it. And of course, to quote the great Sally Struthers, sure, we all do. Sure, we all do. <laughs> but it's like Sure. We so we saw this clip today. <laughs> Wait, somebody, can we just are you I don't wanna I don't wanna we saw this clip today. Okay. You don't someone want to talking about someone who was involved in the January sixth attack on the Capitol. And is a is in And as a result is lost facing, I think the only job they had going at the time and is facing sentencing if they have not been sentenced already. And so this person's fiance, apparently, mm-hmm. was on a talk show, this right wing talk show, mm-hmm. saying that when this happened, that he was canceled. <laughs> And no, he wasn't canceled. He, he participated in a violent law. attack. He broke the law. On the, on the capital of the government. I'm sorry. If you're a traitor. <laughs> and if, they took it seriously. If they you, were like, hey, you tra- <laughs> you're a traitor. We're the government. You tried to attack us. You're a traitor to this country. You broke the law. That is not getting canceled. No. That is called being a criminal. Yeah. Engaging yeah. in criminal, like I got so enraged to the point where I was like, because I, you know, I've gone into this January 6th, I've watched it all, guys. Mm-hmm. I've watched the January 6th, I've been following the, the, I've seen the things, the committees, the documentaries, the podcasts. There are people. And they're having they're splitting up the prisoners now because mm-hmm. you know the prisoners are we're all like together and like we're gonna can't believe we're still being persecuted yeah, yeah, yeah. you know da 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 and so they're now like having to separate the prisoners and mm-hmm. stuff and it's like I the fact and then this woman uh, this was not January sixth but she this the woman that was she was just sentenced to nine years mm-hmm. for election tampering mm-hmm. for, for in Colorado mm-hmm. and the judge like I watched the whole 13 minute sentencing speech mm-hmm. about these people who try to overthrow the will of the voters like I don't the fact that they cannot I I'm losing my mind about it this is not canceling this is literally like you're breaking laws. Yeah, you committed a felony. You you committed. <laughs> I, it makes me like enraged and incensed yeah. in a way where I don't know what to do with the emotions but because it's also, the emotions are very intense. What's really funny is their use of the term cancel, which I feel like is. Do you know what of, it means? It's out of date now. And they're using it to avoid saying that this person broke the law. You know what I mean? They're using it because it's it's a convenient little way to say they were perceived to have done something wrong. When it's like, no, they 100% did something wrong. And in this clip that we saw today, and they're saying it was, it was a protest. They call it the January 6th protest. They, they were guilty of nothing more than simple trespassing. 
And it's like, we what all know that that's not what happened. Drugs are they taking? You're, they're just, they're taking their, here's the thing. Red pilled. They're ho hos. High uh, on their own supply. I, here's another, here's like a, here's, here's a hu- human, <laughs> here's, <laughs> here's another, here's a generous, here's a generous way. I'm trying to move through these feelings of rage about mm-hmm. it because I really feel inflamed. Like, mm-hmm. I feel inflamed mm-hmm. when I think about these people. Yeah. Like, here's a generous thing is, it, or, or like a way for me to, I guess, turn these emotions in a different direction or something. Turn the beat around. <laughs> da, 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 da. Turn the rage around. <laughs> All right. So basically it's like, if you're imprisoned mm-hmm. by grievance, mm-hmm. by entitlement, mm-hmm. that must feel... Horrifying, Mm -hmm. horrible. It must squeeze any space for joy out of your physical existence. Mm -hmm. And that is a prison in and of itself. Mm -hmm. I guess they're choosing it. Right. Or they are submitting to it. Mm -hmm. So... I guess it's sort of like, well, they chose it. They're submitting to it. But maybe there's something wrong with their brains. Mm -hmm. And maybe they aren't choosing it. Like maybe there is a virus or something. Well, I... I, It's just a group psychology thing. It's all these people telling each other the same stories over and over again and gassing each other up. And then this was the... Not ultimate consequence, because who the fuck knows what's going to happen... In November, but you know, these guys like they hurt people, they absolutely assaulted people, they broke shit, they threatened people, they had they had a gallows. They had a gallows and they were chanting hang Mike Pence. They had bear spray, they had yes. uh, zip zip, zip ties. ties. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They smeared feces. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. On the hallways. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They were in riot gear, like uh, yeah. like helmets, and they went there. They went there to fuck shit up, and you know. So this the guy who was the disgusting. host of the show. It's disgusting. Saying it like, makes me disgusted. Sorry, yeah, it's yeah, absolutely it's disgusting. It's it's this. It's pathetic. Yes, it's the it's the ultimate expression of. The ugliest side of America. Humanity. But I think specifically America. This is, this is the thing that we've built, you know, that we've allowed to happen. But it's a twisted American mindset that's like, we can arm ourselves. That's what the mili- that's yeah. what the second amendment we're like the reason that we can arm ourselves so crazy is so we can overthrow the government. Yes. Well the government wasn't coming for you. Because we have because this country is too fucking big and we've been in this state of Treating everything like it's a difference of opinion and that some people are not dangerous I fucking lunatics. I do treat that. I still do that. And I hear my... But not. But it's I, not everything. Not yeah. everything is a difference of opinion. I, some people are fucking dangerous lunatics. I understand that. But I, stu- I do believe that sometimes tamping down a discourse about something is the way to like break through or to maintain but that, something. I'm not suggesting, I'm not suggesting tamping... I, no, there is a bit of a progressive mindset that bothers me about like, oh, like you should be able to say so and so is a piece of shit because, you know, this is American. We can say that about other people or whatever. And it's like, well, maybe we shouldn't be doing that all the time because now we're living in this hell. Do you know what I'm saying? I, I think I do. I'm not sure what you're specifically referring to. I'm saying that there is like and I, how it's a progressive mindset. I've I have just heard from certain like lefties, I mm-hmm. guess. <laughs> you know, like you know, like 
oh no, fuck that. Like that person, they're just a piece of shit monster. We dehumanize, we dehumanize yeah, yeah, yeah. people. And I, I don't, and I, you know, maybe I do, did that when I called Donald Trump a tra- traitor. Maybe I did that. When I, no, that's not, I know what you're talking about. That's not the same thing. I like to focus on behavior and not, that's what I try to do is like go after certain behaviors. But like, I do feel like when we start doing that back at the other side, mm-hmm. we are just, do you know what I'm saying? I want I do. you to, I want to hear what you're saying. I want you to hear what you, what you're all gui- this. We're all guilty of that to uh, one extent or another. But you what know? is your opinion on that? Because I'm saying that we're perpetuating the hell. I do you see what I'm saying? I do see what you're saying, but here's the thing: the what you're describing to me sounds like the way people talk online. Yes, and yes. that to me is which is now in a, in in the national discourse. Uh, uh, yeah, I know, I know, but I feel like. Much like the term canceled, I feel like that kind of rhetoric feels almost quaint to me now. Like we've we've now lived with social media for so long mm-hmm. that when somebody's just tossing around like this Democrat is a communist and uh, you know, from a from a the left side saying, like this person's a warmonger. It's like this has just become part of the regular thing. I don't think that it anymore is contributing to the dehumanizing of people. I disagree. I know you do, but you asked me for what I thought. But I'm shocked that you're disagreeing with me. <laughs> because I feel like because I feel like we've lived with it for so long that I think that maybe it's because I'm I've pulled away from online. To a certain extent, you know what I mean? Uh-huh. Like, I don't, I don't look at it in the same way as I used to. When I left Twitter, that was a big turning point for me where not being, not being active in that discourse anymore mm-hmm. really made it, it, it put me at a remove from it that it put it in a different perspective for me. But people talk like that on podcasts now, and now they're yeah, it's like on TV and stuff. Well, and then I, you've I've got not, like I've not seen it these on these political ads with fucking. Oh, the Trump. political ads are insane. Yeah, I know. But like, but look, what the? F- I I know, I know that. But that shit's always already been there. Do you know what I mean? That's not new. I I mean I understand where how we've gotten to where we are like. The whole like Michelle Obama when they go low we go high mm-hmm. and they're like how did that work out for you what how about that hopey changey thing <laughs> cute whatever and it's like I get it I get it but on the other hand like I just feel like some people are being just as bad on both sides about this moment that we're in oh well I mean look. What you're seeing online is the is the extremes of both sides, and it's it's doing what it's designed to do, which is to make you upset to, and anxious. Divide, to divide us. Yeah, but that's what I'm to saying. To keep the fight going. Okay, about these like, J, but that's what I'm saying about these like J six people. These cra- this whatever. Yeah, it's like how do you. I just feel like I'm not saying like we extend an olive branch. I'm not saying that. Mm -hmm. I'm saying that in order for if we ever want there to be less division Mm -hmm. at some point, one side is going to have to crack the door open. Uh, Yeah, but... I the only I feel like the only way that's going to happen is if the left in this country can coalesce together to figure out a way to work together because the right they're already they're in lockstep and they're not looking for that they don't care 
So the only way it's going to happen is if progressives and liberals can figure out a way to make things better so that you know, people are less is, anxious. Too, it's people too are less to, anxious. It's too late to get into this now. There's so much. This is crazy that we got into this huge topic at the end of the show. I don't think it's crazy. Pete, you know what's going to happen? But before by our next episode that drops, we'll know the outcome of the election. You know that, right? Or possibly um, because possibly because yeah. it will be the second. We Friday. should, but it'll be the second Friday of November. Yeah. So between this episode... I don't think it's crazy that we're talking about it. I think it's crazy that we're talking about it at this particular minute of the day, is what I mean. Oh, well, I don't. Because I'm enraged about people and their cancel culture and the J6 yeah, yeah, yeah. and the this and the that. And you know what? You just, like, you got to get over yourselves, people. You got to get over yourselves. If you want to go commit treason and fuck shit up... Take a minute mm-hmm. and get over yourself <laughs> and really just decide, like, you know, maybe you're not the end all be all to decide everybody's deal. I know. But I mean, look, those people aren't listening to this. And well, I, you I might, if we can, I can reach one January 6th, <laughs> <laughs> if I can just reach. I couldn't even do that. One January sixer. Anyway, you want to talk about Pachinko? We're going to talk about Pachinko. We're going to talk Pachinko's, about the marvelous Mrs. Maisel. Pachi- we'll talk, I don't want to talk about. We talk about Pachinko. Pachinko is so good. The second season just finished. You should watch that. I strongly urge you watching Pachinko. It's the second. It's an Apple season? TV show. It's great. Second season just ended. I thought yes. it was third for some reason. No. All I know is that there better be more Pachinko because we, the way the season ended mm-hmm. was like, are you kidding me with this shit? Mm-hmm. Like, I need to know. You need to know. I need to know. Any other recommendations you would like to make? Well, um, also the fourth and final installment season of My Brilliant Friend. Oh, yes. Has come out. I know that it's like on Max. Maybe you subscribed to Max. In order to watch Salem's, lo- in order to watch our watch along, while you're on h- hopping on the Max train for a month, you may as well get up into my brilliant friend. My brilliant, if you can, friend. buy a month and just like ride the train, baby. Ride, ride the, the rails. Train. Ride the rails yeah. like we do. Yeah, yeah. Subscribe here. You suck it all up. Cancel. Subscribe over there. You <laughs> suck all that up. Cancel. Hop on the other train. That's what we do. Drink their milkshake. <laughs> I do want to see this is a movie that um a lot of people are talking about that I haven't seen is The Substance. Yeah, I know. I want to see people that too. People are really talking about this horror movie with yeah, Demi yeah. Moore. But it's only in theaters. Oh god. When do I have time to go to the theater? I know, honey. I know. I mean, I love it. Of course. I get it. Our break feels good in a place like that. It does. All right. What else? What are you? What are you recommending? I can't think of anything. I know I right recommended now. the last time I recommended. I can't think of anything new. I don't know. My mind's all over the place. It's been it's been a busy year. It's been a chaotic year. You've been traveling your little tush off. And I'm not done yet. And you're not done yet. PaulFTompkins.com slash live. PaulFTompkins.com slash live. There's also a tab on our weekend water landing page. For all of Paul's live shows. It's that trail. Bestie. Let's wrap this up. This has been one of our craziest episodes. Oh, no. Why'd you have to do it? Ramping up. (laughs) What else? Thank you you for listening. We'll be back next month. There's a few <laughs> few more watch alongs coming at you. We got some scary watch alongs. Weekendwater.substack.com. And we appreciate you listening. Go Thank vo- you so much. Go vote. Go vote. Go vote. Make sure you're registered. Make sure. <laughs> um, and until Good next drink. time, stay, stay safe, safe, stay, stay sane, sane, and, and stay, stay strong. strong. Ramp, ramp.